Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are going to be solving one-step division equations. So we'll be talking about what a division equation looks like, and then we'll be solving them and doing a little bit of practice, then a little bit more practice, and a little bit more practice. Let's get into it. Division equations will look like this. Either the division symbol, as you see in the blue equation there, x divided by 5 equals 20, or in a fraction form, x over 3 equals 25. They are usually in the fraction form. So for this lesson, although we could write them like this, a divided by 3 equals 12, or 1 over 4x equals 10, typically I'm going to write them in this form, x over 4 equals 10, or x over 3 equals 25. It's the most common form to use, um, especially moving into pre-algebra and Algebra 1. So that's what we're going to be using in this equation. All the fraction form means is the variable divided by the number. So bye-bye division symbol. You're gone for the rest of class today. All right, so the steps for solving equations are basically this. First off, you find the variable x is my variable. Now I ask myself what is connected to x or what happened to x and we know that it was divided by 5. x divided by 5, that's how we read a fraction. So if x was divided by 5, I need to do the inverse operation, which is the opposite operation to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation times 5 and that will basically get the x completely by itself. Let me show you what that would look like. So I have x divided by 5 times 5. These two will cancel each other out because 5 divided by 5 is 1, so I'm left with 1x on the left of the equal sign. I have 10 times 5, so I have 50 on the right side of the equal sign, and that's my solution. Now, I might be looking at this thinking, you know what, I saw 5, I saw 10, maybe the answer should be 2 instead. So I always want to check my work. So here's my equation fully solved over here on the left, and I'm going to check my work on the right. The way we check our work is we put the answer that we got, x equals 50, into the equation in place of x. So it's going to look like this, 50 divided by 5 equals 10. And I solve the left side, 50 divided by 5 does equal 10. And if my left side is equal to my right side, then I've done it correctly. If I accidentally just looked at these two numbers and immediately said 2, then I would have 2 divided by 5. And 2 divided by 5 does not give me 10, and I would know that when I got to the end. So it's an important step to check your work, especially when you're not entirely sure that it's correct. But even when you are completely confident that it's correct, it's sometimes good to check because you realize that you really did make a mistake. All right, so let's do some practice. Go ahead and pause the recording. Solve this one on your own. n divided by 15 is equal to negative 5. Hi, welcome back. I hope you paused the recording. I hope you really did that. All right, let's take a look. So I look, where is my variable? n. What happened to my variable? It was divided by 15. So I'm going to multiply both sides times 15. n divided by 15 times 15. 15 divided by 15 leaves me with 1. 1n one on the left side of this equation. And negative 5 times 15 gives me negative 75. Now I'm going to check my work in the space I have left over here. So I'm going to put the number negative 75 into this equation, negative 75 divided by 15, and see if I get negative 5 for an answer. 75 divided by 15 is 5, and negative divided by positive gives me a negative. So that's correct. Negative 5 equals negative 5. So therefore my solution is n is equal to 75. One um, mistake I've seen some students make is after you do the check, you've done, oh, I did all this extra work, and so you write down the number that you've solved for. Like, I write down, oh, negative 5. But that's not the solution. Remember, the solution is n is equal to 7, negative 75. All right, we have to remember 
when you're asking for the solution, you're asking for what the variable is equal to. So don't fall into that trap. All right. Next, t divided by negative 1 is equal to 17. Solve that equation for me. Pause the recording, and then you'll see the solution when you come back. Did you pause it? I hope you did. Let's take a look at it. t divided by negative 1. So what's my variable? t. The variable is a letter. <clears throat> what happened? We divided by negative 1. t divided by negative 1. So I'm going to do the opposite to both sides. I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation times negative 1. So I have t divided by negative 1 times negative 1. Those two do something called, they, we call it canceling out. What we're doing is negative 1 divided by negative 1 gives us positive 1. And so we're left with 1t, which is just written as t. And 17 times negative 1 gives us negative 17. I'm going to check my work here. Is negative 17 divided by negative 1 equal to positive 17? And yes, it is. There we go. This is actually a common thing that we'll do. We often um, divide or multiply times negative 1 um, to change the, um, the sign on things. All right, so if I had up here negative 17 divided by negative 1, that would be a way to change the sign of that 17. So just a hint of things to come. All right, practice one more. I want you to go ahead and pause the recording. Solve that one on your own. Welcome back. This is what we should be doing pretty quickly. My variable is b divided by 3, so I'm going to multiply both sides times 3. 12 times 3 gives me 36. Check my work. 36 divided by 3 is equal to 12, and we've been able to solve it. Now, at this point, you might be thinking to yourself, wow, that was really quick and I need some more practice. And the great thing about this type of equation is you can do some do-it-yourself do practice. You can take your notebook and write any letter over any number is equal to any other number, positive, negative, decimal, does not matter. And if you solve it and check it, you can practice all day long. All right? So parents can make up practice pre questions for kids. The numbers don't have to match. Um, it doesn't matter what they are because you're basically just multiplying the two numbers together. All right? So that's just a quick little tip. You can do it yourself, practice, create all the practice that you'd ever want and become really proficient at this. A couple of tricks um, and tips for success. Don't skip the steps. Make sure to follow them carefully and then you'll get to the point where you feel like you can skip the steps and at that point don't skip the steps um, because you need to practice, practice and practice and then you'll get it. All right, hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.